Welcome, readers. Today on Book Chat, we're discussing March's buddy read title, Ace of Spades. Stay tuned. Today's episode is sponsored in part by Amazon Music. Check it out. It has 70 million songs, thousands of playlists. You can listen without commercials. Sign up today and get your first month for free using the Shelf Addiction link. Go to getamazonmusic.com forward slash shelf addiction and sign up today. Again, the code is shelf addiction. The link is also in the show notes. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and thank you for downloading this month's Buddy Read discussion featured here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. If you're new here, every week we get bookish with book discussions, book reviews, shelf bites, and more. If you're wondering what is a Buddy Read, this is a feature where Classy and I select a thriller or mystery title that we both are interested in. Then we have a candid conversation about that book or audiobook. We even discuss it in our Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official, joining a live chat. So grab a glass of wine, a cocktail, a cup of tea or coffee, whatever your drink of choice is, and settle in for this fun discussion. As always with book chats, there is a spoiler alert in effect, so you've been warned. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with your book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. That will really help me out and I appreciate you for doing it. The uncut video version of this podcast is available now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including this podcast after show. If you'd like to support the show in other ways, please consider doing that by supporting our sponsors. By supporting them, you are supporting us. Check out all of the sponsors at shelfaddiction.com forward slash sponsors. If you've read the book or listened to the audiobook and would like to weigh in on this conversation, be sure to join the Facebook group Shelf Addiction Official. I hope to hear your thoughts on this discussion. Links for everything I've mentioned are in the show notes, so let's get going. We've got a lot to talk about today, so we are going to jump right on in. Joining me is the Buddy Read feature co-host, Classy Green, from the Bookish Virtual Assistant. Welcome back, Classy. Hey, Tamara. Thank you for having me another month. As always. Girl, you're you're like stamped in here with permanent <laughs> ink, okay? You're stamped Girl, in. Hey. <laughs> I'm not overstaying my welcome like I'm coming back. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, guys, we, we have a, a good one today. So uh, we're going to give you the stats and the synopsis as we always do before we jump into it. So today we are discussing Ace of Spades, written by Farida Abike Emide, narrated by Jeanette Illich and Tipawa McGuinney. There we go. Sorry if I mispronounced any of those. I did my best. I promise. You did a great (laughs) job, I believe. Thank you. First Mm -hmm. published July 1st, 2021 by Fuel and Friends and Macmillan Audio. The hardcover comes in at 432 pages. The unabridged audio comes in at 13 hours and 49 minutes. Classy, would you kindly share the synopsis? Yes. Ace of Spades. Welcome to Nivea's Private. Academy, where money pays the hallways and the students are never less than perfect until now, because anonymous texter Aces is bringing two students' dark secrets to light. Talented musician Devon buries himself in rehearsals, but he can't escape the spotlight when his private photos go public. Head girl Chiamaka isn't afraid to get what she wants, but soon everyone will know the price she has paid for power. Someone is out to get them both. Someone who holds all the aces. And they're planning much more than a high school game. Doom, doom, doom. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. You know what? I like that synopsis. It was it was short. It was sweet. It kind of grabbed you like, come on, you want to know more? Mm-hmm. You know, it was it was just right. Yes, I would agree. Yeah. Not too mm-hmm. much. Because, you know, some synopsis, they tell the whole dang on story. story. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I like I, after reading it, I was like, yeah, this that was enough to get my attention to, to say, OK, I think I think I might want to read this. Yeah, absolutely. OK, so I just want to start with what this this book is toted as it's toted as uh, a cross between. What Gossip Girl and Get Out. 
Yes. Now, when I started read, so I knew, okay, obviously YA has a different tone. And I saw, I knew it was going to be high school drama. So I'm like, okay, high school gossip girl. Got it. Cause I loved gossip girl. Now I didn't read those books, but I love the show. I even did a special episode <laughs> uh, of the gossip girl. If you guys want to see it, it's on the, or hear it. It's on my website. I actually did it on another podcast that talked about gossip girl. So I rewatched the episode to talk with them. It was so fun. Mm. So I'm bona fide fan of gossip girl. Okay. Now, when I'm starting to read this, the first thing I got instead of Gossip Girl was Pretty Little Liars. Mm. And then a little later, I got Gossip Girl. So it was a nice little blend. Yes. And then ironically, the author says how much she loves Pretty Little Liars and Gossip, and Gossip Girl. Girls. Mm -hmm. So she blended them as well, like on purpose. So I'm like, yeah. I knew I wasn't tripping because I'm like, that's <laughs> that's pretty little liars all day, every day. <laughs> right. But she said she wanted some, you know, some black characters. So right. that's what she um, added and, and threw in a little more than just some black, you know, little yes. well, things that are issues that black characters face. So Yes. You would not see this subject matter on either of those shows. So, <laughs> so wow. if you are familiar with those, so I think, so from Gossip Girl point of view, that is like a high school, an elite high school type situation with a lot of wealthy people. And there's one character that is broke and kind of they're on a scholarship, really. So it's kind of, mm. that is, I think, the Gossip Girl Thing, as well as you know um messages being broadcast to the the student body at large that's gossip oh, okay. girl okay now the pretty little liars component though is how the text messages are distributed so like in pretty little liars instead of like on gossip girl it's like a um a website blast kind of thing going out mm. um but on pretty little liars there's this one character called a that mm. sends text messages to just the girls included in the group. So instead of the whole school getting it, it's the people involved getting messages like, hey, I saw you, X, Y, Z. Look okay. at this. <laughs> gotcha. So, um, and that's another high school setting, but definitely it was a small town. And I think that's kind of how it ties here as well. This was a small town environment, not like a major um, city. city. No, no. And see, yes. I didn't watch either one of these shows. So um, I, I didn't have a reference, but, you know, mm -hmm. I did get the, the high school vibe of, you know, texting and, um, you know, computer hacking and all that. But oh, yeah, nope. And I think they have too many seasons for me to probably go back. No, you know what? I don't know why I say that, because if I can go back and watch um, Game of Thrones, I can do that. It's according if, if I like it. Yeah. You know, honestly, it's a little different. Like, you know, when I told you just now, I went back and watched a, cup, a couple episodes to prepare for that one podcast. Mm -hmm. Seeing it now, several years later than I originally watched it, I was like, it's still good, but. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> you've grown too. That's too, you yeah. know, I think we, yeah. Kind of like, like things like, if you go back and read a book, you're yes. just like. And I like this. Why? Why? <laughs> no, I still like it, but I could tell yes. that a lot of flaws, right? Like, oh, mm -hmm. that's not good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, and then the last component was Get Out. And it took me quite a while to, like, get the vibe. But when it yeah. arrived, it arrived. <laughs> exactly. Because that's what I was thinking, too, like where is the get out? And I liked yeah. at the beginning, I should have wrote the quote down where he says, well, it, and I don't think it was a get, no, it was a get out quote at the beginning, but he was kind of like when there's too many black, white people, I'm afraid. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Like you said, when it got, when it was revealed or it hit you, you was like, oh yeah. This when it got real. Yeah. It got real. And homeboy Terrell was like, Dude, I don't trust these. I don't trust all the white people. <laughs> like, I don't know you how know, you go to that 
looked school. at it, I was like, you know what? <laughs> there is somebody in everybody's family that say that. I don't care. They might be. It, it was a line, and I wrote it down to, and I, I can remember it. Remember, was it Terrell who who asked um, De- Devon? I want to call him Devin so bad. Devon, um, name so many nice white people or decent white people. You know, the difference. Be- and, yes. I, and it never really... And that stuck with me because I was like, you know what? There is a difference. Yes. There is a difference between good and decent white people and pe- people, period. But in this in, in this setting of this book. Yeah. In this context, you know, you're, right. You want to say they're not all that bad. They're not. OK. He said, well, tell me the good ones and the decent ones. And it made him think. And you know what? I sat there and I was just like, I was just like thinking about my work environment. Crickets. Like, Ooh. <laughs> like that right there said a lot because that's the yeah. thing we give them a pass a lot yeah but when you when you start going good and decent it's a big difference yeah luckily I can say I have a couple people I would say are good people mm-hmm. um, but not they're not co-workers they're friends yeah they are yep. not in my workspace mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a different type of people in my workspace yep yep so, yeah. All right. So <laughs> there's so much going on. Yeah, it is. I, okay. Also, you guys, we are going to do an after show. Um, if you want access to that, you have to go on over to Patreon and check it out. Uh, the author has put together this bomb.com playlist that we are going to talk about a little bit. We are also going to dive into some like artwork about these characters and some more details about the characters that are not like in the book. It's like extras. So if you're curious about that, head on over. Yes, please. Yes. Um, (laughs) But I think it's also cool that, you know, you sent me this link and I appreciate that greatly. But the author actually has um, content warnings on her website. So before we get into the the dirty you know the <laughs> the the deep parts of it you should be aware of that there are a lot of warnings here i'm not going to read them all but you know i guess the most notable ones would be racism homophobia bullying those are i think the most you know glaring ones but there are a lot more like I don't know, I'll just name a couple randomly. Emotional abuse, suicide attempt, gun violence, murder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sexism. Sexism, stalking. It's a bunch, y'all. It's a long list. Yeah. So there's a lot going on in a white book. But, you know, it kind of reminds me, we were just talking before we hit record about euphoria. Like how euphoria is like real adult things happening in a high school setting, I feel like a lot of that is what's going on with the students in this school. Right. Yeah, I I agree. Um, It gave me those vibes as well. And and I kind of want to go back to to your comment of adult things happening in a YA setting. Um, I think just, I won't say the times have changed. We want to put that label of adult things but I mean these kids are going this is real and this is what they they go through and it's kind of like how do you is it really adult things <laughs> not anymore probably no. not anymore but you know not what anymore. I kind of I feel like that I don't know if they really ever were is we may have been sheltered from them because there's really nothing new under the sun you know how that it used to yeah. be teenage uh pregnancy Teenagers have been getting pregnant since the beginning of time. You know what I mean? It's just. Yes. So these things that we want to call adult things, um, they've been happening to youth for a long time. Um, I think we may be just beginning to to be exposed more to it because of technology, social media, you know, all those type of things. But um, but yeah, and I did I did like that, even though some of the topics were adult like mm-hmm. um she still made it feel like a teen it was still teen or ya you know how sometimes um the 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 youth the the ya characters can be too adult right i didn't feel like that with these characters 
Mm-hmm. I felt like they may have had some so-called adult issues, but they still were teenagers. They still did stupid teenage crap because I was picking out some stuff. I was like, oh, what? And I was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> She's a teenager. <laughs> right. She's she's a teen. Yeah, he's a teen, right? Yes. You know, even though they're doing yeah. things that we think are adult like, they're still teens and I liked how she she kept it that way. Right. I agree yeah. with you. Mm-hmm. Like things from, you know, Chiamaka worrying about her clothing that day or her hair being kinky that day or braided. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. those are things that I guess adults too, to an extent, but mostly teenagers. I don't want to go to school and them ask me about this hair. Not today. Right. I, <laughs> I will be late whole... to press this hair. <laughs> yes. Right. I will. Yes. Or, or the one time when she told uh, um, Devon, keep your dick in your pants. And she turns around and sleeps with, <laughs> with Belle. And I'm like, did you just tell her <laughs> to keep it? Yeah. 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 So... <laughs> There were many High moments, and, and it's probably like that mom, like, girl, did, yeah, I, I had many mom moments while reading this book. Absolutely. She was a te- 13, so. Yeah, and just like in YA fashion, all this stuff goes on with the parents being pretty oblivious until, you know, Devon's mom got kind of hyped to some of the stuff, but she still didn't know exactly everything that was going on, like, she knew he was being after he admitted it right he admitted okay i'm being bullied and he came out when he came out to his mom mm-hmm. um and she knew he was skipping school but she didn't know the why other than him being bullied she didn't know the vast story of what was happening because they keep yeah. it from their parents these prior parents are present in this book and they still didn't know anything <laughs> yeah but you know devon's well and that's the thing working both of them, both uh, working, working to get them in school, make sure they had a good education, be the best that they can be. You know, that's the, the common thing. And if your kid is saying, I'm fine, you know, you you think they're fine. And Devon's How's mom- How's school was, today? Fine. <laughs> yeah. And Devon's mom was dealing with, you know, unpaid bills. And, you know, so she didn't really have you know, time to to kind of delve into that. If he said fine, she accepted that. The same way she accepted when he had that money and he was she was like, Where did you get this money from? And he basically said, You know where I'm getting it from. Right. Don't ask me. And D- it's don't like, ask, yeah. Mm-hmm, don't ask. So mm-hmm. so yeah. So she did. She turned a blind eye to a lot. So and I think Which is odd. Get, but Yeah. But I think like once you you kind of get further into the story and you see that he um, survived, we'll talk about that later, you know, his, you know, he survived. And I, mm-hmm. I think she probably was just like, he's still here. Mm-hmm. There's other things to worry about. So kind of go easy on him. Mm-hmm. Although yeah. she's paying all this money, scraping by, can't pay bills to try to keep him in the school. And you out here doing this, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's hoping once he graduates, he's going to Juilliard. Right. Just a few more months. Just a few. Just hang in there, Devon. Just hang in there. <laughs> yes. Keep going. You're almost out. done. <laughs> Just get to the finish line. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's just like, I'll turn a blind eye. We got a few months. We can get out of here. Get right. you away from Andre, get you away from Jack, all those people. Oh, I swear that guy. <laughs> but, you know, let's, I, I really liked um, Devon's character. I liked, overall, I liked him. Like, I didn't have a lot of problems with him. Like, outside of doing a couple dumb things that most, you know high schoolers do and most people who have access and are strapped for money do crazy things um Mm -hmm. luckily that wasn't what my high school experience was (laughs) but you know it was good to see another experience um but I, i i liked devon i liked that 
he was openly gay except for not telling his mother (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know he had boyfriends he had relationships he had like i love that i'm like i'm here for it i feel like he would be my friend if we were in school together i feel like he would be in my friend circle he's real smart he's got musical talent he's got all you know he's got all the friend checkbox yeah, he's well rounded. He was well rounded. I did. I liked him too. There weren't any issues. Um, I believe she wrote him really well. Um, yeah. He was personable. Um, you understood his struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, another, you know, basically this book is about Black people being in white spaces and the things you have to do to survive. And a lot of times you don't even realize that you're surviving. Or that, you know, that you're doing certain things to survive because you you, you code switch and you, you know, and you begin to trust. And mm-hmm. he was, you know, he was he was very trusting, had some some good friends. I thought he was a good person. Yeah. You know, he was he seemed to be a really good person um, who, who just had to do some some crazy things, like you said, to survive. So, yeah, he had to do yeah, a little he bit did, of he did. He he sure did date. He did. I was like, go ahead, Devon. So his his major relationship at the beginning of the book, that was the first thing that got outed, if I remember, was his relationship with the football player that was kind of not really out the closet, kind of, but he he was yeah. known for doing stuff, but he wasn't like out, out. Oh, and after that was out, he was just like, okay, now I got to But I mean, he laughed it off like, well, the one girl said, well, most... um." famous people have sex tapes and he was like you're right I guess you're right now, now I have a sex tape <laughs> now I have a sex tape I mean he became like a little celebrity it was no big deal that you know here you have this football player who he was basically bi or wait, wait he was gay but he was he dated Chiamaka they had like an agreement yeah to, so they know. weren't they were secret dating fake dating as the genre mm-hmm. goes they were fake dating for clout yep So, yeah. Yep. So. um, So, yeah, that was that was kind of weird because it's like, okay, so maybe it's Scotty. Maybe Scotty is ace because, you know, his commonality was Chiamaka and Devon. Mm -hmm. So. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That was wild, though. I mean, I can't imagine like something being sent to your classmates with you in there. Like, oh, my God the embarrassment right well you know what let's let's let the audience know too in this this plot the text messages that were being sent like the outing of hit the sex tape was sent to everybody except for devon so devon knew people were laughing but he didn't know what they were laughing about yeah yeah so every message that ace it was ace not aces right ace sent out they like, you know, for Chiamaka, every tape, you know, everything that was sent out to her um, about her went out to all her classmates and she did not get the message. So, yeah. you know, she was left out. So she's kind of like, what you guys laughing at? Like, I know <laughs> there was this one scene in the classroom and they're talking. I feel like she was talking to um, I can't remember who she was talking. Oh, I think she was talking to her bestie at the time. Jamie. And Jamie. And they were like, what? What happened? You know, she didn't have her phone was dead or something. She got up and marched over to this kid and put her hand out like, give me that phone. <laughs> he gave it to her. And she, she saw was, what she was, was head in charge. That's why she was mm-hmm. what? prefect, head girl. Prefect, in head prefect. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So she had a little power. Yeah. But yeah. I, yes. I thought that was interesting, too, that, you know, everybody, they were left out. So that that built that helped build up the the suspense, the thrill, the you know of, of what was happening next. Because whenever you would see everybody laughing, and the main character is is you know not involved, you're like, oh, must be about them. What is it? What's next? <laughs> and it seemed like Ace was escalating, like the seriousness of what was being revealed was escalating with every text message to the point where Devon wasn't really getting sleep. He couldn't think about anything about, oh God, the next text, what could it be? 
Mm-hmm. He was stressed out. And, you know, so was Chiamaka, honestly. She was very put out by it. I would be too. I mean, especially hers, the one of the okay, so like it's wild the lengths. Okay, how do we transition? Because I don't want to be like stuck in this spot forever. I want to get to the meat of it. Let's go. I, okay, so <laughs> so y'all, okay. So the meat of this story is if you haven't read it, is that there's this society of people, white people that have gone to this school for decades and decades who are part of an association that's been together for a hundred years or more. And they allow a couple of black people, and I say allow because they admit a few black people in, let them get comfortable freshman, sophomore, junior year, senior year rolls around and they take them out. They destroy their lives and make them like run for the hills. Week. Yeah, it's right. like Hell Week, like a sorority of Hell Week, yeah. On steroids. Mm-hmm. Where, to the point where they want them to drop out of school and they can't go to the colleges they thought they were going to go to. They literally try to destroy their lives um, through, you know, let's push all the buttons. We're going to set some things up. We're going to have people follow you. We're going to take photos that you don't know we're taking. We're going to. And that's the thing. This whole book, Chiamaka is trying to figure out who is Ace, who is Ace. And then one lucky day, thanks to her, she like forces Devin to go, like to Devon to go to the library. It's a Sunday. He didn't want to do it. She's like, basically, you guys better be here. <laughs> We got to catch this person. That's it. So they go. And a whole, a whole plot is revealed on that Sunday morning. On the computer. On the computer. Yeah. Yeah. And she, and, and Ace was revealed at least. One portion of Ace was revealed at that time. Um, So, yeah, it was, you know, um, years of institutionalized racism (laughs) Um, or what they call it. Is it eugenics? Yeah. Yes. They called it social eugenics. Social eugenics. Yes. Where, you know, they and it makes you think because in our higher ed and in these private institutions, this happens and not just in the higher education in your workplace, you know, all of this, this, which I think it really uh, made me think more about this book because this topic, it it happens in academia, which is Uh a great start because, you know, here you have these, these two, because both of them were prefects Uh And, and, and that term being used is almost like what, like top, Notch, almost you're at like I think valid, it's like Victorian. valid Victorian, yeah, yeah, that kind of level. So here you have these two top black people who are head of the class, basically, and he's going to to you know he's applying for Juilliard and she's applying to Yale, right? Yale or Stanford, one of those. Yeah, and so basically, this you know these people are like, no, how dare we allow. Well, they did allow. No, they didn't allow because they had to earn that 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 title. You can't just earn great. I mean, you just don't. Well, you can. I'll, I'll stop there. But anyway, no, they did earn it. They earned yeah, those spots. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, but and now they're going to take them down because because mm-hmm. I think from from the story, they only Yale only allows like one or two people from the school to be admitted. And mm-hmm. come to find out, Belle was one had also had applied, which also made me think she was in it because mm-hmm. the, you're the competition. And here you have Devon going to Juilliard, and basically yes. they was like, Mm-mm, "Y'all some highfalutin Negroes." <laughs> That's I know. How I felt like, "Oh no, we got to knock you guys a peg down." Yeah, and it's crazy because they don't let just any black people in; they let the cream of the crop in. They know they're going to succeed in the school. So it's like, how dare you think you're going to succeed in this life? We'll show you otherwise. Yep. 
Yeah. And I mean, it's just a form of, you know, ruining their legacy and all of that. And, and it, there's so many, you know, like as we talk, I'm beginning to hear just the layers of how her story, you know, here uh-huh. you stop these elite, you know, they're about to, you, they could be the first in their family um, and, and her, her play on class and status and racism, you know, even the, the class and, uh, and kind of racism uh, with Devon and Chiamaka because Chiamaka was of a totally different status. Well, Devon, Devon, well, Devon is black, right? Yes. Chiamaka is mixed. Her father is white, right? Italian, and but her she's mother seen as a black woman, right? But her mm-hmm. status is different. Both her parents are doctors. She walk right. around and Jimmy yes. choose. Yes, exactly. her life is different from Devon. Yes, and that's what I was saying. The way she played with that, even between Devon and Chiamaka, here they are. Yeah. Even though they're both being targeted, Chiamaka even treated Devon like crap because of her status. You know, yeah. she was just, you know, she talked about his clothes, where he lived, you know, it, all those little nuggets that she she threw in there in, into the story. Um, but to be we, fair... Chiamaka was serious about her fashion because even in the end, she was oh, yeah. talking shit about his fashion. <laughs> yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. But you know what? That was her. That was all her personality. She yes. had no dams. Yes. No dams about that. But that was all her personality. But it just, you know, it kind of just showed too that even though you have these two people, two black people who are being targeted, you still had the clash of the classes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, of, you know, Chiamaka, who, like you said, she walked around in Jimmy fucking shoes in her uniform. Right. Had her own car. Her parent, both of her parents were doctors. Um, but yeah, this society and, and in this society, it wasn't just their classmates that were uh, a part of this ACE um, society. It was headmaster, people in the Te- community. The music teacher. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. So it was like they never had a chance. It was they were it was it was institutionalized racism built to destroy these people. And I don't know about you, but it made me think of some times where I kind of felt like. I feel like somebody is against me here, no matter what I'm, you know, like I've I've felt that like I've Mm -hmm. been down that road before. Where, you know, no matter how our parents say you have to be 10 times better, somebody yes. is going to try and, and knock you down. Or as one of her friends says, somebody's going to knock you off your high horse. Because uh, Chiamaka didn't care. She was she was like, yes, I'm you can tell her I'm shit. shit. I'm yeah. shit. Bow down, bitches. That's what <laughs> Bow down. <laughs> Bow down, bitches. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's how she felt. And, yes. and, she, and she continued on regardless. And that now that is something I did love about her, regardless of them revealing every little thing about her. I mean, she did have some anxiety and some, but she still presented herself like I'm that bitch. Yes. I'm, I'm her. Y'all better recognize. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah. Um, yeah, like even the part where when she realized the connection, you know, she was looking and she saw the connection between the girl who she thought she ran over. Jamie and, ran over. Right. Oh, well, man. Jamie ran him, but she was in the car. So I guess she's an accomplice kind of thing. Yeah. She included yeah. herself in that. Jamie was gaslighting her with that. Are you sure, Chiamaka? He you was the driver. He was like the biggest d bag <laughs> ever. I'm like, Jamie, you need to be punched in the mouth. Shut up, because mm-hmm. you know what you're doing. He was Man. so mean to her at times. Yeah, I'm like, he just needs somebody. To, ooh, anyway. <laughs> so after he found, she found the connection. She was like, tell it, Devin. Devon. I keep saying Devin because you said no. Devin. Now it's in my head. Oh, okay. <laughs> Because I know a Devin whose name is spelled like that. It's so hard. Oh, my gosh. So she tells Devon, meet me at this address. She goes to Belle's house and gives her the business. Like, she walks in. She's like, do you think 
dead people stay dead or something like that. She gave her, th- she read her ass the riot act, basically. Mm-hmm. She's like, <laughs> she's like, um, um, uh, but I still love you. you. But, you know, and then Belle revealed that her yeah. family, that she didn't want to be a part of that, the, um, the scheme or the, you know, to, to take her down, but. It was deeply rooted in her family. She had to. And then yeah. she's like, I started to like you. And then, you know, she like, bitch, I don't give a fuck. She like, you did this to me. You guilty by association. Bye. <laughs> she walked her ass right out that house. I'm telling you, she gave yeah. her the business. I'm like, good yeah. for you. She was, I was mad. Like, I don't blame don't her. Please don't fall for her. Right. Please yeah. don't yeah. fall for her. That's what I was hoping. Like, please don't. <laughs> You know, you know, a good kiss and whatever. Mm-mm, do not let that fool you. And it did yeah. not. But yeah, but I knew something was tricky because the girl wouldn't even let her in the house. There was nothing um, revealing. You know, there was no pictures. There was one picture that she wouldn't let her see. And I'm like, mm, Bill, because that other girl was in there. That's what I thought, too. I'm like, something is entirely wrong with this. First, mm-hmm. I would be suspicious of her because suddenly she's team chiamaka and she wants to be her friend and together we're going to give the finger to jamie and all of a sudden and to me it was a little bit unexpected in the book where they just went from friends and all of a sudden they liked each other like instantly i'm like what when that happened okay it wasn't just like each other like friends it was like dating right like kissing and i'm like what happened this fast Maybe? Yes, very I don't fast. Know, you know, but, you <laughs> and know. there were no clues beforehand. They were just hanging out. There were no "I like you" vibe cues going on. Nope, nothing like she's staring at me or she's giving right. me the you know the look or no vibe. She hated her, and even Belle said it. I thought you hated me. Yeah, yeah. So, but they flipped the script on her real fast, and I'm like, okay, so now they're like dating. I guess they're dating, hanging out. And I'm, it just seemed something was off from, with her from day one. I could tell, like, something is wrong there. And she's just, I mean, who goes into a house with no pictures anywhere? Yeah. None. A At first, house. I thought maybe the headmaster was her daddy or something. Oh. <laughs> Before we figured out the connection. I'm like, mm-hmm. maybe the, the, new, the headmaster is related to her some kind of way or something. Yeah. No, no, but yeah, it was, it was a very interesting, um, she threw in a lot of nice little, uh, twists, um, hints, uh, I love the pace. Well, I won't say I love the pace because at first I'm like, this is slow as hell. This Mm -hmm. is very slow. But then again, I had to put my mind in it's YA. She's building these characters. There's a lot of characters. Yeah. Um, and and I think she did her character building was excellent because it I mean was. I can pick out, you know, every time we talk about a character, I know, you know, something in particular, there's a full background. Yes. I mean, it was 13 hours, but you know, I can, you know, like Jack, we knew Jack, we knew full background so she did really great with her character um, development and that took me a little time um, because most of the times in some of the books that we you know we've been reading they don't delve as much maybe into mm. all the characters so I was just like yeah. okay okay yeah but it still was interesting yeah, and it I was. Put my mind into this is YA. You haven't read YA in a long time. Yes. This is, you know, so um, I, I I put my mind into. I'm not reading adult mystery, adult right. thriller. So once I did that, it was like I kind of said, okay. Kind of sat back in my seat, like, all right, let's let's ride this out because you know I'm not <laughs> me. You're like I'm adjusted <laughs> now. Let's do the thing. <laughs> It took about 40% from me before things really got moving for mm-hmm. me. It's and 40% is quite a bit. Yeah. It was at that point, like when Jamie, you know, when he, I think, and it might've been that 40% mark where he kind of said, are you sure I, I hit, hit 
that person or mm-hmm. you better watch what you say or what you talk about she and mock and i was like oh shit I, I know i'm like dang he gonna turn on your ass and kick you under the bus i was like See, <laughs> something ain't right here because he just i mean the claws just came out you know little sweet jamie my best friend just you know all of a sudden you saw the real jamie and like, he was oh. doing the most yeah. he was doing the, the absolute most like the photo that was taken when she was knocked out that was him Mm-hmm. had to be oh yeah. my god the whole setup y'all the setup with the, the girl that got hit oh my god okay look y'all we passed our break time we're gonna take a quick break <laughs> <laughs> check out these commercials check out our sponsors do take a peek at the book review journal um, that's available on Amazon. The links are on the show notes and we will be right back to finish this exciting conversation. Stay with us. Today's episode is brought to you by the shelf addiction merch store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs. Perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. Welcome back, y'all. We're going to jump right back on in. We were talking about Jamie's rude ass. His ass. <laughs> I can't. He Nothing is like a, a nightmare. Cute, yeah. The little cute boy who's, yeah, I think every, well, he was probably like the, he wasn't a football player. He was a little nerd, but his family, I mean, all of them came for money. But yeah, he was the, the, the cute boy that everybody probably wanted to date. Yeah. He was on the football team too, I think. Okay. Um and I just like when I found out that Chiamaka had slept with him, was sleeping with him, I'm like, ew, girl. Ugh. I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah. And the thing was is that she waited. Yeah. The author waited to to reveal that. Cause at first it was like they're just best friends. They've been yeah. best friends since blah, blah, blah. They just, you know, hang out. And then, you know, because I mean you can have that crush on your best friend where you just we're we're perfect we do everything together but then when it said that you know they had slept together and it was more than once i was like yeah ace had outed them and you know bell approached her like you sleep with my man you know (laughs) and she said no and in that moment i believed her i'm like it must be a lie and then she's like, Jamie said you did. I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, Man. no. Right. She, she was just it. like, no. It was like a secret. Like, no, we weren't. And I was like, yeah. that's not what Jamie said. Right. But you know what, though? In the meantime, I think, too, like what we forget to mention about Chiamaka. Chiamaka, you, she was using people herself to get what she wanted, to get you, to get, you know, her um her status as head girl of uh Nivius as well. You know, she used people, that's why she was dating Scotty. Um, you know, Jamie was was a part of her, you know, a, a piece for her to get status as yeah. well. So, you know, she was she was the she head was it girl. Mm-hmm. She was like Blair Waldorf Dorf and Gossip Girls. She's the uh, one. Don't step to yeah. her without, you know, like little girl will bring them coffee. Here's your coffee. The sophomore. Oh, so she was Blair. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> she was like, I'm the best. Everyone will do what I say because I run this bitch. <laughs> Bow down. <laughs> yes. That is her all day. She was like Blair Waldorf's character. Like until she mm. wasn't. Until she wasn't. Yeah. Exactly. And that's where that's where things change. It's like you can be there all you want to, but remember, you black. still a black girl. <laughs> yeah, still black. And they made sure she do that too. You can't and wipe that off. <laughs> right. And that's the thing, like <laughs> when we were talking about black people in white spaces, that's exactly when they let us know. Like, yeah, you know, like we're smart, we're smart, just like you are, and blah, 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 just like you are. And then all of a sudden they be like, but you can't do this because, or we're not going to let you get that far because, you know, it's 
we were like right there. Yes. Like right she there. just got head prefect. She was feeling good. It's like almost like she had won the crown at homecoming and they yanked that thing off her head and kicked her down the stairs. <laughs> it was like, and you know, that reminded me of old Carrie, like a Carrie episode. Yeah. It's like mm, the pig blood just dropped on her head. Like, nope. Sorry, nope. bitch. <laughs> I don't know what you, you thought you were, but we about to fix this today. <laughs> yes. To knock you off your high horse. One of, her, yeah. one of the people said that was a Ruby or Ava or somebody. One day yeah. somebody's going to knock you off your high horse. Exactly. And, and that was her whole goal. Yeah. Yeah. Whole goal. Uh, so I did want to talk a little bit more about Jack and um, Devon's relationship. Oh, my God. So... When it comes out, Jack was like involved. He had some hand in what was going on. Devon did a drive by, basically. Like he approached him, like Giamaka went after Bell, except for in the end, he literally put the beat down on him and he let him. He just took it because he knew he was wrong. Yeah. He just took it. Exactly. <laughs> he like, I loved you. You're my best friend. You, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, he went off. Yeah, and I mean, what could you do? He was like, no. yeah, I messed up. He like, yeah, I'm not even going to fight you. Just get it out, basically. So here's my question, because I I struggle with Jack in the end, because I was like, I thought Jack was black. I thought he was too, but then. I question that. But at the end, how, because because he said people like you always get the scholar, you know, when because when whenever audience, whenever someone says like you, people like you. It's usually some a white person saying something to a person of color. You get the scholarships, you, you, you know, get our what, scholarships, you get our jobs, you get yeah. that. Right. Um. Now when we looked at the, at the website, you know, we'll talk about that later. The character yeah. looks black. I okay, so I honestly and I don't I wish I had wrote down Jack's description. Mm-hmm. Because at first I th- it changed for me. At first I thought he was black cuz you know, he was mm-hmm. also from the poor side of the tracks. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about how they walked to school and all this stuff. So I assumed he was black as well. But then something happened I think not just that conversation, but something else that made me feel like he was white. Like when that thing came out and, you know, he knew he was gay, right? He had, he had come out to him. But when the text came out, he distanced himself from him. And it was something in there that made me think he was not like them, wasn't right? Okay. And they said in the book over and over again, we're the only two black students. We're yeah. it. Oh, Chiamaka and right. You're right. Chiamaka right. and, and, and in, Devin. Uh, Devon. Oh my God, Devon. Oh, okay. But so I'm like, he's, Jack is white. He's got to yeah. be. So I'm thrown by what I'm seeing online. So we can talk about that later. But mm-hmm. in my mind, Jack is white. He's just poor and white. Poor and white. Right. Yeah. And that's what I thought too, because they were growing up, you know, in the same neighborhood. But at the end, when he made those comments, yes. And like you said, they were, they kept saying we're the only two black people and Mm -hmm. we are being targeted. But then, but then at one time they had aces sent out a text on Jack. Yes. And I thought that also made me feel like, okay, is he black? Now it is. You guys are attacking the black people. See, I thought it was just a misdirect, kind of like to not Mm -hmm. let them know what was going on, like kind of to just, especially, you know, for Devin or um, Devon, Jesus, Um, I just think it was a (laughs) misdirect um, for him because he's like, well, because it was after that, I think it was Terrell who brought it to his attention, like outright, y'all two, the only black people. Mm hmm. So So I think he kind of thought it, but he wasn't ready to engage with that because Jack had a blast. Right. Exactly. Right. And Scotty had a, well, Scotty Scotty was guilty by association because. Right. uh, Yeah. Of Chiam, not Chiamaka, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I did want to mention that. I was like, because I'm not sure about Jack, but yeah, their relationship was, um, 
it was a it was a cool relationship until you know he's uh, yeah. you know all these things were were coming out and Jack was concerned because you know because I think they were both teased yeah uh, well they both were scholarship kids basically yes. yeah and and Jack was basically like hey whenever you get teased or or um something said I'm I'm also a target mm-hmm. and and I think oh and then he was like you know I'll go I'll tell Dre he'll fix it. Let's talk about Dre. I like okay, Dre. let's talk about Andre, <laughs> aka Dre. Dre. Oh God, let's not forget about Dre, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's, not, let's not forget about Dre. <laughs> um. So he was also a long time friend, like of Devon, and Dre is like you know he a little drug dealer. He he a little. Trouble? You little thug. You little thug. thug. <laughs> Do I like the thug? He liked him. Yes, he did. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> he would go. I liked, I liked how she did this, though. You know, she yeah. was she was well rounded with the with the characters, the queer LGBTQ. Yeah, she did. Yes, Ray I was loved a, it. A gay gang drug dealing yeah well, i don't know about gang but at least a drug dealing uh boyfriend of devon but he was like kind of on the, he was on the dl so like okay so every time devon went over there and he said it later to him he's like what do you think people think we're doing in here <laughs> like your people I'm ain't dumb they know drugs. what's up <laughs> right i do sell for you but they know i'm not just picking up from you right but it wasn't like publicly out. Right. Because they knew that Devon was out or they at least knew he was gay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Dre was not out, not publicly. Mm-hmm. And people had their suspicions, but he wasn't out. No. So, um, of course, you know, Dre kind of says, hey, you need to stop selling these drugs. We can't really be around each other. You, you know you trying to do this thing and it's not really going to work anymore. (laughs) He kind of dumps his ass basically. Mm -hmm. And when he leaves his gang or his other sellers jump his ass out of selling. So he gets a beat down (laughs) from Dre's people. And Terrell was like, wait, who did this? (laughs) He's like, wait a minute. He could have stopped that. And he did. If he loved you. If yeah. He, right. If he loved you. But he was more worried about his image. And he knew, he knew in that world is, you know, and okay, I'm going to go a little, this same kind of topic is, is kind of similar to our topic from last month's book, uh, Razor Blade Tears, you know, mm-hmm. with, with the, the image of, black men or just men period and and gay and dre was afraid that if it got out that i'm he's gay he was going to probably lose his place with his big boss i think he mentioned that or you know the head dealer or whatever yeah. you know if, if they find out i'm probably going to get beat up and i probably won't be able to be in charge anymore and that was his fear even though he loved him you know, he, he still wanted to get a little hug and a little kiss every once in a while, but he was like, mm, I can't risk, you know, my my status. His so, livelihood too. Like that's mm-hmm. all he had going for yeah. him. Right. So I mean, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. yeah. I mean, and he helped Dre. I mean, he helped Devon out. Even, you know, helping him get money for his mom and just having extra money. So so yeah. yeah. So yeah, I did like I, I liked Dre. So in he the was, end though, Dre got caught. He got caught up. He went to jail. And that Ace scene kind of shocked me. Him. Huh? Yeah. I said the Ace told him. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. Ace knew exactly where Devon was going. He found him. Mm-hmm. So he's in jail and Devon comes to see him. And this dude is beat up. Like, he has been getting jumped every morning, basically. They trying to beat the gay out. Mm-hmm. 
in jail. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, is that a thing? Yes. In jail? I think, well, and I think too, because it's not prison and jail is, you know, where it's, I don't know. Or who's to say who was in his uh, cell? Yeah. Could have been somebody, you know, because if there's a hit out, like, hey, we need you to take care of so-and-so. But yeah. yeah. Which does make me, it it reinforces that it was, you know, the ace, the aces group because no one really knew outside of his clique, right? And they didn't even know for sure. They just kind of, you know, we know, but we don't know. So and someone told. The guard. Yeah, it could have been the guards. I mean, yeah. this society was huge. Yeah. And if you think about it, police are, not all, but why wouldn't the police be a part of that society, especially the kind of power that they have. So, yeah. So they probably were the ones probably beating the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, like Dre, like is all like, I love you. <laughs> I'm like, Oh shoot. Maybe he thinks that I might not be able to tell you. Yeah. I may, I might, I may die in here. here. Mm-hmm. But yeah. tell you now. Yeah. Always loved you. I was like, oh. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, that's so sad. <laughs> I know it made me wonder, like, dang, yeah. you get this ass beat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, wow. So that happens. And we don't really hear anything about him again for the rest of the book after he leaves there. I don't think we hear about Dre anymore. No. Um Not- no. But he, Devon finds out something really important while he's at the jail or prison. Yeah. He stops because, okay, we we missed this like, you know, back some years ago, quite a few years ago, he saw his father in the jail and he was never allowed to go. His father always said no. But this one particular time he was allowed to go. And during this time, he kind of admits he has a hard time liking girls. And his father says, don't worry about it. I was a late bloomer, basically. (laughs) And he tells him, you'll be all right. You just got to find the right one. And it kind of comforts him a little bit, but he's not sure that's what it is. But he tells him, don't come back here ever again. I'm glad you came, but don't come back here. So fast forward, he's at at the prison or the jail. I think it was a prison for some reason. Um, yeah, you know what? It had to be a prison because yeah, because his dad finished the story. You're right. It had yeah, to be a prison. so because mm-hmm. he she he goes up to like the clerk and he's like, "Hey, is there any chance I can see you know whatever his name was, um, Malcolm? Malcolm, yes, Malcolm Johnson or whatever. I need to you know not not Johnson. That's Andre's Richards? Last name. Yeah." He's like, I, he's my father. You know, the lady's looking him up. Hey, can you give me the dates? You know, his date of birth. And of course, they have the same birthday. That was fun. She looks mm-hmm. and she's like, oh, um, so yeah, I have some bad news for you. He died. He, uh, he, a long time ago. The day he came to see his father, he died. And at first I'm like, he died. And then it's like, revealed he was on death row Mm -hmm. like damn that's fucked up like oh my god (laughs) yeah shocking yeah but he was too young he was a young boy you know yeah and he didn't want his his mom and dad probably didn't want to yeah that was for his mother to never tell him ever i think that's wrong yeah yeah especially once he became of age Right. To kind of understand it. Yeah. I could see at the time, because I can't remember how old he was, but he, you know, I think it was seven years. I think the dad had died like seven years ago. So yes. the bond was probably 10, because I'm assuming he's 17 or 18. Yeah. So, but yeah. So at least when he got to, you know, but you know, that's yeah. just me. I don't know. I would have told him. I mean, you know, now he's trying to see his dad and he's long gone. And it, that really just, I think, devastated him. 
So he's got all these blows, you know, the text, this whole ace thing, you know, he's like the boyfriend situation is a mess. And now he find out his <laughs> daddy is dead. It's like, oh my gosh. Right. That's enough to put you over the edge. Right. Yeah. That is enough to put, especially a teenager, all that, all the stuff he is going through that right there is enough to send you to therapy. Yeah. So, man, I'm telling you, he's my favorite character. I like Devon better than Chiamaka. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I mean, Chiamaka was strong, but I really loved, I really did. He, it was so many layers to um, Devon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was my favorite as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I think... Ch- should we just go ahead and talk about like the, the very end and then talk about the audiobook people? We're coming up on an hour. Oh, yes. Let's do that. So the very end, you guys, um, I guess some revenge happens. The school burns down when they try to out the, you know, the establishment for what they were doing. You know, there's some other things going on there, but that'd take a long time to explain. <laughs> mm-hmm. But a lot. Bottom line is the school burns down. They didn't, they got their message out, but only because Devon sent a tweet that went viral. That's the only reason it got out because the other route that they tried turned, the lady turned out to be a part of the group. Ooh. Right. Like backstab. When everybody starts switching masks, I'll just say that, guys. When all the masks, changed that creeped me out because I, I was driving and I, re- I was listening to that and I just got a visual like you turn around and everybody except for you and Devon and Terrell <laughs> yeah <laughs> do not have on a mask right and they switched yeah. them for these like blank white f- mask or something it was Those some kind of gawk or something mask, yeah which is like the the, the little smiley the fake big smile mask. Oh, yeah. creepy. Mm-hmm. Extremely creepy. Yeah. They call it faux gawk or something. Hmm. So they guy got Falk. out. What is it? It's Guy Falk mask. Ah. Uh, mm-hmm. So is that the, it has like the mustache on it too, right? Right. The, the curly yeah. mustache and the little, uh. Goatee thing. Yeah, the little peak, the little goatee peak. Yeah. So somebody set fire to the place and uh, everyone got out except for three people. Three students. And I'm not kind of mad at all. So who was the first person? I'm trying to remember the order. Hmm. They were like somebody was CC, I think. And Ava and Ruby were not. I was just, I was hoping. I was like, did Ava and Ruby get it? Yeah. So Cece was one of the girls that was like a minor character. Then there was another person that was in um, Devon's uh, music class. Mm -hmm. But we didn't really know him. But the big one was... Go ahead. You say it. (laughs) Jamie. His ass... Mm, bye deuces, deuces. <laughs> yeah he died mm-hmm. good riddance because he probably yeah because he set her up the whole i mean he basically was the catalyst he was or the knight i think that's what they called him um from what we were you know what i had sent you i think that was the knight yes he was i mean he started it with with Chiamaka. He he yeah. he led her um led her to that path. He let her believe that he ran somebody over and killed them. Mm-hmm. Only right to use that down the line. Right. Right. And you know, because he basically got her drunk and sexually assaulted her or or molested her or what, you know, all these different things that he did to to make her life miserable so sorry not sorry that 
He passed yeah, he away deserved it. He was only sleeping with her because he was curious or some shit. Like, get the fuck out of here. I just oh, can't. that scene when she was like, you know you like. You know you oh, it got in his head too. She was like, "You liked yeah. it," you and he like did this. like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you like this chocolate boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did like it. Yes, but... he, did. he was like, "I didn't." Okay, sure, whatever Why you, you say. Because this is my thing. Why you keep coming back? Right. Okay, if you just set me up. You taking pictures? Right. Okay. All right. I'm just saying. Exactly. <laughs> So, you know, that was basically the end of the main story. But the best part was we jump ahead like 16 years. And we get a glimpse of what their adult life is like. And I love that. Yeah, that was really nice. They created their own um, group to kind of protect future teenage or you know high schoolers who were going into certain schools they researched and found out if you know these schools you know had these ideologies of institutional race uh racism social eugenics whatever yeah and yeah so they would i forget the name of the society or not the society but you know the group that they formed yeah they had a school they were trying to draw those students away like really conf- like tell the parents hey like it started with a letter to one of the parents like yeah. hey this school is known for doing you know they do these kind of things these kind of things this is why you should consider our school yeah and it was signed dr she <laughs> maka a day a b a day whatever yes and, and prof- professor, professor. <laughs> i was like divine yeah. right I was like, oh, wow, they did succeed. They didn't let those hoes take them down. No. And they yeah. started their own legacy to protect, you know, yes. or at least inform yes. um, the next generation of students. So that was such a great ending. Yeah. And, you know, Devon was still with Terrell. And it's they are in love. In love. <laughs> Mm -hmm. i'm like that is super cute they are in love it was because i was a little worried about them because i was like yeah because he you know and i forgot we didn't really kind of talk about terrell terrell was in terrell helped nivius um get some dirt on you know provide he helped provide information to nivius because um headmaster ward helped pay for his sister's medical bills yeah. So, so he used um, Terrell to get information on Devon, but um, Devon being such a forgiving heart and understood, you know, the reason Amazing. behind it. Yeah. So. But he didn't do it long. He changed his mind. I think he said he did it for a day. Yeah. He changed his mind and then he was just threatened. Like, you can't tell him or we're going to X, Y, and Z. So that's why he kept it from him. But he admitted it. Like at night of that dance, he admitted everything. And he's like, wow. I think he started the fire. I do too. <laughs> they didn't say it, but I'm like, I, I bet you Terrell started that fire. Uh-huh. He was like, oh, yes. you know what? I got to be, I got to redeem myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe he did. This the is fire. the, I can help you in this way. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. And actually, the irony of them being together is because, it may, maybe not ironic, but like long ago, when he was first trying to sort out his life, him and Terrell shared a kiss mm-hmm. and that he had forgotten. He had wiped from his memory because he was attacked immediately when people yeah. saw them. He was yeah. attacked brutally to the head. And he blocked it out. He blo- he just straight blocked it out because it was so strange how um, Jack was like, are you talking to that weirdo Terrell? You don't remember him? And he's like, no, I just met him last Friday. <laughs> like, what? Mm-hmm. He like, totally no. blocked that guy out. Yeah. 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 And here they, they come together in the end. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. It was. The ending, a I'm nice telling you. A mystery thriller with a happy ending. Yes. I'm like, yeah. the payoff was worth it. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
And these two who didn't like each other wind up being the best of friends. You know, Devon said, I love her. Yeah. <laughs> and Terrell was like, you should have married her then. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Right. But that, you know, that was the kind of love that they had for each other. Right. And I loved that part too, that, you know, what all they went through, they began, their friendship began to bloom from the pain mm-hmm. of what they had gone through. So yeah, really did like that. And the icing on the cake, Dr. Chiamaka making her rounds. She has one last person to see. That mf <laughs> This guy old is sick. Mm. It is the headmaster ward. Mm-hmm. He couldn't even talk, but the look in his eyes, he was scared. Right. You should be scared. You should be. All the horror you did. Right. But you know, no one else were good people. She probably didn't do anything. She probably not going to do but nothing. She but she could have. No. Yeah. But just, you know, but just the fear of you knowing every time I come in that room, what I could do. I know. That's what it is. Do you know nurse, what I could I do to you? Because you know, he probably shitted himself. Yes. Nurse. Yes. <laughs> and that's what it is. He probably thought she wanted revenge and she could do anything to him. He could not talk. Mm-hmm. No, you are at my mercy. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, you can try She's like, and tell oh, people. Oh, hey, Headmaster Ward. <laughs> eyes probably got biggest saucers. God, he like, oh, this is my nightmare. That's what it is. Mm-mm. Every day she comes in there, she probably visits him every night just to scare the crap out of him. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> I'd be doing that serial killer kind of talking too. Like, hey. <laughs> uh-huh. Not Going doing anything pocket. to the man. Right. Just scare Going him to pocket, death. Playing with needles. <laughs> right. Just checking and making sure no air bubbles are in here. That's all. <laughs> like, can you scare Head him to death? <laughs> <laughs> Every day. Uh, yes. Oh, man. That was like the best. Yeah. That was a good twist at the end. I love a good little revenge, you know. Yeah. So... All right, so <laughs> let's talk about the two audiobook narrators. I like the audiobook. Um, I think they did a good job. Jeanette Illage and Tipua McGin- McGuinney. McGuinney, there we go. Okay. Because um, it went back and forth between our two main characters. So there was a female and a male narrator. I like the contrast, honestly. Yeah, I did too. And, and th- it... It almost, I know at one time they did, it was a little, is it third person that they kind of threw in there where while they were talking, you could hear, you know, the thoughts of the other, other character. Is that third person? Ooh, I can't mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a few times. I was like, hmm. but I did. I liked, I loved the contrast. I, I enjoyed the, their inflection tone everything nothing to complain about yeah i did speed it up though i listened at 1.5 and they sounded regular to me i don't know Mm -hmm. maybe that's just i have acclimated to 1.5 and that's the preference Mm -hmm. i just started on 1.5 i didn't even start slower i saw how long it was and i'm like nope 1.5 it is because i'm not going to be sitting here for 13 hours no, I started at 1.5 and moved it up to 1.8 and okay. I didn't I didn't notice a big difference. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, cuz 13 hours and 49 minutes, that is a while. <laughs> yes. Yeah, cuz when you mentioned you had started it, I was like, "Oh, I usually start them on Sunday." And when I saw it was 13 hours, I was like, "Ooh, let me start now." Let me start now just yeah. in case you need mm-hmm. some extra time. And yep. I literally finished that mug this morning. Mm, okay. I finished mine today as well. Yeah, I think I was done around like 10 or 10.30 or something like that this morning. Yeah. So I just had like an hour and a half to go that I listened to this morning. But I'm like, oh, well. See? Let's knock it out the park. Knock it out. Yep. All right. So it is that time, y'all. We have to rate Ace of Spades. Yay. You want me to go first? Sure. Why not? I gave it a four. I really enjoyed it. Same. Ditto. Yes. Yep. 
I gave it a four. I mean, how the beginning was, it would have been a three, but suddenly there was an uptick in the end. Mm-hmm. That's and I was how like, I was feeling. oh, now things are really <laughs> juicy. <laughs> That's how I was feeling like, oh, this is going to be a three. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Which is not horrible. But I was just like, I wanted this to be. Well, we we looked at the rating. And at the time, the rating was a 4.3030. I mean, 4.31 was the rating when we, um, the la- last month, I wrote mm-hmm. it down. So I was like, okay, why? Because we always want to know, why do they think this is a 4.0? But right. yeah, that first, first, like you said, 40%, I'm just like, mm, this is a three. Yes. Mm. And then it picked up. Yeah. And it, and it got all the fours for a reason. Right. Yeah. It did. It earned them. I just wish more people had read it. You know, it only has 35,760 ratings right now with about 8,000 reviews right now on Goodreads. Mm. And I have seen some YA fiction titles have hundreds of thousands of reviews and ratings. Huh. Yeah. Why? Hmm. Because nobody wants to talk about racism anymore. That's the same yeah. with, you know, like when the hate you give. Once yeah. they figured out, oh, God. Mm-hmm. We want to face it, you know, and it's a great story. It's it a really a good, good story. story. Yeah. I mean, you can't. And that you, cover you is the f- bomb. Yeah, it is. Gosh, that's a beautiful cover. Although her hair doesn't look like that for most of the book. No, it's straight. It's straight. But you know what? I think that's that's that part where because her mother braided her hair mm-hmm. and she probably started. You know, like I'm not gonna, I'm not going to be what they expect me to be or what I think I should be for this school. I've given, you know, I've tried to be perfect and try to, you know, assimilate and now I'm not. So I yeah, I think she's probably... like that now as an adult, but let's keep it real. She only ran out the house like that because Belle was calling and she just threw a hat on her head and ran out the house. She mm-hmm. hadn't found her purpose <laughs> of her hair yet. No, she had not. No, because when the hat came off, she's like, where's my hat? Because she yeah. did not want anybody to see her with those braids. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, she had not accepted her, the the hair that grows out of her head, basically, yet. Yes. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. She oh, still we had an it. image. Yes. yes. But it was a good ride, y'all. So, I definitely, we, we recommend it if you have not read or listened to Ace of Spades. So, yes. next, next month, April. We are reading The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. If you were in the Facebook group or on book clubs, you would have already known this. <laughs> <laughs> and you could have gotten your book ahead of time. So please consider joining us on Facebook or on the book clubs app. Book clubs with an S. The link is in the show notes. And you too can find out what we're reading ahead of time. Get your book. And so when we have these chats here on the podcast we're not spoiling things for you so and you can be a part of the buddy read yay Yay. yes and you can also join us for book club real real world book club online if you'd like but of course if that's not your cup of tea we are right here on the podcast again next month so no worries all right i think we're done what do you think classy i think we are okay y'all it has been a blast thank you so much for listening to today's episode We appreciate you for being here and we'll see you guys next time. Take care, guys. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.